it's Zara. I'm back. Okay, so these are the two pieces that I was working on in my previous video. I used what I had and basically, well this one I pretty much wanted to focus on these little pre-cut tile pieces. So I had plenty of them. Um, this one with the, with the um, mandalas, I've been using what I have because you can't fit all the same color you know you run out of tiles because what I bought was mainly like what they had in the store craft stores so little bags which probably only had up to like 30 to 50 at the most but I don't even think there were 50 tiles I think my son James just got home and she's gonna freak out um, anyway I grouted this one with the gray and I used pre-mixed grout which I've got a few comments from you guys and I think I'm gonna use what's left of those they were really easy to make or to use because they're pre-mixed I just took it and put it in and these are just they're they're craft um, craft uh, like they're not professional grade you know they're craft grade they're not for like putting in someone's home or you know, and right now, especially like, now I'm not even really planning on selling these pieces. I'm just going to keep them. I mean, you know, we'll see what happens. But they're really just for me to figure out. Um, and also that I do believe they were sanded. And you can tell. So this one, I used the uh, alabaster is the name of it. Sorry. Uh, but I like the way the lighter color played with this piece because... I don't know that I wanted every piece to stand out, but if I had to put black grout on this, which another one of you guys recommended, man, what a different look that would have been. And then this one was called Natural Gray. And again, such a different feel. If I would have used the lighter color, it would have been a whole nother look to it. And then I just painted the edge with like a, a glossy purple color. So I want to show you what I'm working on today cover up. I have a little, another piece. This is what I was kind of working on that got me distracted when I was grouting. And so I had these, uh, these are actually like tiles. Let me show you the difference. Um, this isn't probably a good, big enough one to show you. But when I work with stained glass, it's a flat, very consistent flat on both sides. But this is a tile that's meant to be grouted into a wall or something, and it has a different kind of bottom. It's like, look at this too. It ha it's like, it kind of bevels in, and then it has these grooves on the bottom as well. But, um, you know, and they're glass, so you can nip them and stuff. But each, all of these different pieces have different uh, components that you have to kind of figure with, you know, you have to work with. Um, so I had a bunch. These are all the way around the piece. And let's see if I can come up any further. No, nope, that's as high as I go. That's a decent sized cross. I would say it's at least uh, 12, maybe 14 tall by 10 across. Got it at Hobby Lobby. And um, so I'm, again, I wanted to use what I have. Now, that being said, the previous mosaics I made... I found this in the basement, so I'm just going to show you. I had a template, and I don't, I think I threw out the templates, but I made a template out of cardstock or um, probably poster board, and I just kept laying down and I and I drew out these these petal shapes onto with a template onto the glass, and then I cut each petal, and then I actually ground each petal. So, because I was making stained glass at the time, I wasn't familiar with nippers, and I mean, yeah, nippers to a certain extent, but not really getting a shape to use in a mosaic. So, these were pre-cut, and I used these on um, the other big mosaics that I have, my mirrors. For this one, I used what, what I had left. See, I'm really getting down to it now. Very few colors left of these petal shapes. And I don't have the, um, yeah, I don't have the wrapper that says what brand or whatever, but this is from Amazon. And I just put in mosaic tiles or pre-cut glass 
shapes for mosaics, whatever. I do a search, and whatever comes up that I look at and I think, well, this is for the, for the best for the money. You get the most tiles and the best um, variety of color So because I wanted to try them first. And then I'm going to make a full-blown order from a mosaic store. I've already put one order in, and it came to over $200 because... I'm going to make some projects with the kids. I want to be able to do, like say I bring a star, like this is a burn star, but I'm going to burn or I'm going to make a few shapes on the Glowforge, so like a fish, a butterfly, different shapes, and then they can just glue tiles to them as they see fit, and then we can grout it and it's a little trivet or something, you know, so I wanted to have enough tiles for them to play with and for me to... Um, get to know as well to see if I like them to order them again um, because I really feel like if you're doing this having a variety of oh my gosh where's my phone I want to show you something so I see things on Pinterest too all the time so let me just show you another thing because this really speaks to my um, what I like and so look can you see this feather okay there's a peace sign tile, and I have these somewhere. I've had them in my stash. Let's see if you can see that. Yes. Um, there's a couple of, there looks like ball chain or little beads. Oh, geez. Little beads going in a spindle. There's a butterfly right there. So this appeals to me. It's got that, there's glass or mirror at the top and some full tile pieces, so they actually cut a couple of big tile pieces, but then this is all chop, 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 chop. So anyway, um, and then there's a couple others, you know, that I'm just getting ideas because a dragonfly shape, you can cut the shape and then just do, there's a hamster hand, which I already did mine. Mine was pretty much based on uh, the ones that I had wood burned. So this is kind of, but I added the clouds. I really like that. Um, so, but I just like to see what other people are doing. See, I like... They're using these little round, kind of bead-looking tiles. And so I ordered some of them. So I get to know, oh, look at this. So this is a feather, and I had, I got a feather cut out. It's not as, this is just a basic feather shape. But I want to play around, and they put like a, a vein down the center, and then all different textures of the same color so they're playing with red and anything anyway I lost my train of thought <laughs> I go down that rabbit hole this one so what I'm trying to do is get and I get a, a lot of different options on the table that I can then throw into the mosaic if they if they fit and if they look right I want to use them so for this one I'll get back to this one um, I knew I had these black ones. So this is what I was doing when I was grouting and I forgot and I waited too long, but I glued all these down. Then I knew I wanted to do flowers and use these petal shapes to the best as I could. Um, and I think I did pretty good. Like I ran out of the dark blue, so I had to throw a light blue. And then I had two different colors of light blue. So I just used them together. Like I didn't have enough white, so I threw, oops, and these aren't glued yet. I was going to glue these today. This is what I'm working on today. All these kind of connector um, vines. I just don't like that it just kind of sits. I mean, you could do that, but I, and then I would love to have um, a little ladybug in here, a bumblebee. So I, in my Amazon cart right now, I have ladybugs and bumblebees, but they won't get... I can wait and, you know, maybe just put a, a ladybug right here. I think I did that in my other, I just put a piece of uh, red, a tiny piece of red with a little black head. And it looks like a ladybug is there. Because these are, this is a butterfly, flower, 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 butterfly. So these were from that other, um, this, which again, I don't have the name on it. But this is from Amazon. It's just a bunch of different shapes. I use these on my um, Hamsa hand too. Um, and I haven't been using these. These are, they're much taller. That's why I was thinking about using these. These are called, oh, made in China. And there is a VIN number or whatever. Um, I was going to use these as the, the vein or the, the vine. 
but they're very tall. See, look how tall. They're even taller than they are wide. There's a bunch of them, but I'll figure something out to do with them. I could, I could actually, you know, I'll play with them and figure it out. Um, but again, this is just to, these were cheap, probably five bucks for this, you know. All of the stuff I bought was pretty much either from the craft store, on sale. I went when, um, I bought everything that uh, Hobby Lobby had when it was, I think they were only 30% off. Sometimes they don't go um, on sale very often, so I just grabbed them. Um, but for this mosaic, I just decided I wanted to use the petals. I used, I had these littler black gems. Now, the gems, you can find them everywhere, but they tend to be uh, see-through, which is fine. On this, it would work fine. You would just be getting that background showing through. And ultimately, I want to try and do glue these onto glass, too. So. Um, I've, I saw in Walmart yesterday, they had a frame with like a plexiglass back. It was like a plastic backing and I was going to like glue them onto that and you could put, make a sun catcher thing anyway. Um, but these tend to be not opaque. So it's hard to find these to use in a, in a mosaic this way. Um, although I, I had the black and then I bought a big black bag of the big black ones because I love black as a, an accent in uh, mosaics. I like to put like on this mandala, did I do it? Um, no, on my big one, but see here's black, here's black, uh, and white. Black and white, look, I'll grab this one real quick. I shared this one in, I think, in the other video. But see how I do a black and white check? This is really green. It's hard to see, but it's like a deep, deep green, and it was opaque. See, you can see through the red ones. You're actually seeing the wood behind it, but the red is really rich and pretty anyway. Um, and then I did a black and white. These black ones are the same as these, and then this is glass tile that I just cut a strip and then cut a white because I ran out of these. Um, but I do like to add black and white. And then again, this would have turned out so different if I do use a different color grout, you know? So this is what I'm playing with right now. All of these ideas, um, and I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. I have been cutting now. Before I did all this pre-cut tile, I would cut, like I said, every tile myself, and I would have to do that in the basement. So you have your sheet of glass, and this is the kind of cutter that I used. It's, it's called a pistol grip and you have this little sponge with oil on it and you would take your glass which I'll use um, I'll use this petal and you just push down so in other words I'm in my craft room and I don't want glass all over the place so it's very tricky because as I'm looking I want to turn the, the right here look this is little glass pieces these are little and these can be used in a mosaic, by the way. If I'm cutting over, which I've been trying to do, when I make my cuts, I cut that, I cut it over this, and all those little bits fall in here. And then if I have a piece to fill, I take my little tweezers, which I bought these recently. Oops, has glue on the tip. <laughs> but I take my little tweezers, and you can just go through here and like find that one that's gonna fit. I have two tweezers, these, these were from Michaels. I got two pairs of tweezers, a little like pick that I've been using too, and then the final one, which is amazing, it's like a, a, a chisel. I'll show you that when I find it. But anyway, I've been trying to do most of my cutting over a bucket of some type. But in the basement, I have this grid board, kind of like this, but it has holes in it so the glass falls down into the holes of the grid and all these little pieces then you can dump them out and you know you don't have as much yeah so anyway so I just would take this pistol gripper and just run the blade oops, across the glass and then I had this downstairs which looks gross but it's I don't really know what it's called I forget but it has two things and then there's a line right here and what you do is you just line up the cut with that line and squeeze. 
and it breaks the glass. Now you could totally use this in a mosaic and that's what I did for these big leaves. See how I, I just took each petal, so I have a few greens left, and I made a line through the center and then I did that. And then right before I was going to glue them down, so before I glued them down, I had them just sitting there and then when I was getting ready to glue, I cut them. And so each of these have a, a that way the grout, well, not the little ones, I didn't do the little ones, but I did all the big ones. Um, the grout will go in there. I don't know if it'll look good or bad, depending on what color grout I use, but I wanted to have that extra little realistic, and then none of these are glued, so I want to be careful because I kind of did lay it out how I wanted it. Um, okay. So, but for this type of mosaic, what I've been using, so I'm not using that as much, although I brought it upstairs because for that reason, to cut the leaves. So those two go together. I had this one as well. See, there's a little smiley face on here because you can also just cut, use that, and then just kind of grab it and break it like that. I, I did that a lot. But then this is the one that I'm really using for, um, to make a mosaic. This was the one that kept coming up in all the videos and I bought one at the craft store and it's red. Hold on, it's right here. But it was, it's a little bigger. It's about the same weight, but these blades were kind of wonky and I didn't know what this was for. I don't know. I just, it didn't, feel like these were moving and I didn't like that and then I got this at Home Depot it doesn't do that these are nice and tight and they go closer together as well so I I couldn't even cut my mirror tiles with this because there's like such a big gap in the middle anyway you know you're you learn by experience unless you can take a class and that's why I like to share this stuff with you guys on YouTube because um, it saved, it would have saved me a lot of, you know, figuring this out myself if someone would tell you all this stuff. And every time I went to look at a video about the nipper, this is called a wheel nipper, all they did was show you how to cut the glass. They didn't talk about the tool. So I still don't know enough about this tool to tell you because there's little like, um, you can tighten and loosen things. And I don't know, like I said, on this one. I don't even know what this is for. Like, what is this little thing for? I think it's to like, it makes a barrier so you can't really put the glass down as far. I don't, but why? Like, that's, I like to know that stuff. Anywho, I've just been using this one and it's working much better for me. I can get a much more. Now for this one, I'll show you what you do. I'm going to cut that same tile. Now, Say I wanted to make this into more of an oval or maybe a leaf petal shape. I'm just going to hold the, let me see if I can come in a little. Oopsie. I'm going to hold the nipper right on the edge of the glass and I'm just going to go like that. Oh, that didn't really go very far but you have a little more control. I'm just trying to not, see, so, oh no, that's not even it. Where's the one I just cut? This must be it. Man, I did a good job, hold on. Yeah, look, that's where I just cut. <laughs> you can tell because it's shiny and then this is the grinded part. So anyway, it's a much easier look. This is what I've been doing. With the green to make my little vein things, I just took this strip of green glass. These were strips that I cut in the basement of a nice green stained glass piece and then I'm just taking it and I'm just cutting and it flings right into the uh, bin my little dollar store bins and then you have all of these pieces to choose from some of them are going to be more appealing to me they're nice and thin they're a little curvy now I don't know how to make them perfectly straight or anything like that but I have a lot of options to use and some of the wonkier ones I'm finding like they had a little pointy end to them. Those are the ones that I'm sticking in between the petals. So this is glued. Some of them are glued. The ones that I made like attach the leaf to it. This one's not glued yet, but see what I mean? It has more of a, a pointy end that I can like stick in between. So you just kind of cut a bunch of um, 
different pieces and then figure out it's like a puzzle that's what I'm finding it's very therapeutic um, I've always been attracted to the the shininess of the glass let me go back up um, but the actual putting it together it feels a lot like a, a puzzle it feels like you're just doing a, a jigsaw puzzle so you put, you look and you see well that might work and then you try it and it if it does and you can always cut them to fit too so anywho um i think that's all i really wanted to share i'm going to and then here one last thing the final thing i ordered this and this on amazon they came they both came i don't know why i ended up getting two or you know what no I got this one on Amazon just one I bought both of these at Michaels and my weld bond I think I threw it out but it was in more of a round container like a normal white glue looking and now you can't miss it like I like this new labeling this is the glue and I couldn't get it um, in craft stores before so now it has become a lot more well known but this is what I used to use for my mixed media mosaics as well for my polymer clay. It's just a white glue, but it's super, um, it works. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. What I've been doing is I just use this, which is so fun to take off. <laughs> I like when you can peel off the, like when you get it all over you and it just comes off. Anyway. Um, so I put a little bit here, but for the most part, I've just been holding the glue and then um, let's see where do I where am I super sure about it I like this section right here I'm gonna go ahead and glue it I just take each piece and put it in place like that you have a little second to, to maneuver it if you want and I like to leave a little gap between the, the each piece of tile. I don't want it to be butt right up against it. See, so I'm even going to scooch it over. I don't know that I love this piece there. I'll wait. Let's see. I kind of do. I like that it's a little fatter and... Um, misshapen it kind of almost looks like a bud or a you know I'm into plants these days but like it's not perfectly like connected and some mosaic artists they trim every little piece and it looks so realistic so um, that's all glued let's see I want to connect him to here so I'm going to put some glue on here so that he's not just like you know out in the middle of nowhere drifting he's connected Oh, let me put a little more it's kind of thin and this glue will dry uh, clear my my thumb has glue on it so it's like grabbing the tile too much and I just kind of push it down into place all of the messiness will come off once we um, grout because the grout will rub so this is all glued now um, anyway I think I'm going to come back when I do the background tiling because I'm not sure what I want to do for that. Um, I don't have, so on my, uh, make this one, because I was using what I had, I really tried, I have this, I want to show you one more thing. I have this that I've had forever. It's a, like a tool or a, Kind of like what your husband might have in the garage. I'm going to try and turn it on its side so you can see it. It's like one of these little drawer things, right? I've had it forever and I had a, like a few things in here like picture frame hangers or whatever. <clears throat> and look at all that color. See, I put all of my pre-cut glass pieces in here. So what I used mainly for my um, Hamsa hand was all of these different blues. So I had this little thing of blue. I threw a few of my own colors in there. So these were my own pre-cut. But all these triangles and kind of diamond shapes, this is what I got from either Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or Amazon. 
were just to try and see, but I used mostly all of these and I liked it. Now I'm not sure what color background I'm going to do on my cross yet, but I knew I kind of wanted it to be sky and water. That was the idea for the fish and the flowers, you know, and the clouds. So I like it. I like the look of it. It's what I expected. I kind of, you know, feel like that's what I wanted to do. Now on other mosaics, I do kind of feel like it, you want it to be not to take away from your focal image, right? So for the cross, obviously I don't want to use blue background. I don't think I want to use any of the colors that I've already used because then like if I have a red background, that red flower isn't going to pop. So what I'm thinking is a neutral. So I might go with a gray or a cream color tile and I have a lot in the basement and I'll just cut up a bunch of strips like this and then what you can do is you can uh, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna try this right here I haven't <laughs> actually done this before but I can make kind of like triangles so I'm gonna cut triangle and, and I'll we'll see how it goes I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna see how triangly they turn out. So far it's looking pretty good. And what I'm thinking is you want that nipper right in the middle. Now obviously I'm not going to use the green. I actually a light green. Oh, I think I just chose my color. Like a really light green or um, even a vibrant color green. So let's see do I have any other color greens in here. Let's see. Like this I don't know I would want to go a lot lighter um, I don't have any or a yeah I don't know all right wait sorry I lose my train of thought because I'm so excited I'm sorry I'm a flittering fairy so one of you guys called me that before so look so now I've just cut a bunch of triangle shapes that are really easy to fit in and I don't know how close I need to get to every tile or um so like this I might leave more space in between depending on the color of grout you use so if I'm using say I use a color of grout that matches the background color I don't have to fill in every nook and like my tiles don't have to be like really butt up against each other because the grout plays a part in the whole design okay so I'm figuring it out um, letting you know as I go and hopefully this has been helpful for you guys if you're interested in ever making a mosaic and honestly I want to tell you the what I'm thinking too when I do the kids project I'm gonna do it with my friend and her grandkids and my nephew um, maybe I'll invite Maya too she's she's 14 now so you never know um, doing a circular pattern is super easy too and I have my I'll bring my little compass you know and just have the lines kind of drawn on the substrate for them and then it's so easy to just place tiles in a circle so you can't go wrong if you ever want to make a um a, a mandala um mandala yeah all right you guys but other than that let your imagination your imagination run wild go to pinterest um look at other people's art and and really don't get caught up in what you think it's supposed to be just do what you want to do um, and have fun. Thanks for watching.